Welcome to Trisco, version 15.1. In this video, we would discuss the basic interface of Trisco and the introduction to Trisco geometric modeling. Once you open the Trisco application, from the file menu you can open a new project. By default, you notice four primary windows, image, grid, block and colors window. Using scroll wheel you can zoom in or zoom out. Hold and drag using the left click to orbit at the image window. By default, you have one grid of one unit each on X, Y, and Z axis and this grid is auto-linked to the block window. The red axis line represents X axis and the corresponding axis title is also in similar color. Similarly, you can notice green represents Y axis and blue represents Z axis. To add a new grid at the X direction, Choose the cell after which you want to add an extra grid. Once we click on the cell, insert before or insert after, which is represented by the up and down arrow is activated. We choose insert after to insert a grid at the bottom and an empty voxel inserted in the X direction. Click on the last cell in the X direction and choose insert before. We now see an empty voxel has been inserted between the existing two grids. We can add more grid on Y direction following the same procedure by choosing a cell in the Y axis and choosing insert before or insert after. Now we have 3 by 3 by 1 grid Cartesian to define blocks. Only the first voxel is highlighted with a block and others are empty because, at the block window, we have defined only one block with dimensions from grid of 0 to 1 of X axis, 0 to 1 of Y axis and 0 to 1 of Z axis which means only grid 0 to 1 of each axis is linked to the block and not the rest. You can change the dimensions of each grid by clicking on the cell, activating it and entering the new dimension. If you change the dimension of 0 to 1 grid at X axis from 1 to 3 for example. First grid at X axis stretches by 3 units and the corresponding block also is stretched. You can undo the step by Ctrl plus Z to return to the previous grid and similarly you can redo by Ctrl plus Y. If we wanted to define a block with three units on X axis, one unit in the Y axis and one unit in the Z axis, unlike the previous experiment where we changed the dimension of 0 1 grid from 1 to 3 units. We now will change the extents at the block window by changing the X max limit from 1 to 3. So now we define that the block should start from the zero grid and end at the third grid of X axis. Since each grid is of one unit each, we get a block with three units in X axis by one in Y axis by one in Z axis. Now if you change the Y axis grid zero one from one to two units. Block is stretched at the Y axis by two units. Similarly, if you change the Y axis grid 1 2 from 1 unit to 2 units for example, you notice that only grid dimensions are changed, but since no block is defined in that grid domain you don't see any change to the existing block. It's important to notice that minimum and maximum values given in the blocks window are not dimensions of the block but represent the extent of grids we want our block to be present in each of X, Y, and Z direction. You can add a new block using a similar procedure followed when adding a new grid. Select the reference block before or after which you wanted to add the block and choose the insert before or after command. We would choose insert after for this example. Now we get a new block with default dimensions of 0 to 1 in each axis. When you select the block the corresponding object in the image window gets highlighted. You can notice that blocks overlap with one another hence we can't see them distinctly. Now we change Y axis limit to 1 to 2. We can change the X axis limit from 0 to 3. Now we see two distinct blocks. It's not necessary for all the values in the grid to be linked to some block definition. In this example you notice Y axis grid 2 to 3 have not been assigned to any block. So grid is similar to creating a framework or a blank canvas to insert blocks inside it. We generally try to make minimum grid required to model the geometry, but it's not mandatory to assign all the grids to some corresponding blocks. We would try to create another parallel block by choosing insert after. 
The x-axis limit would be from 0 to 3 grid and y-axis from 2 to 3 and z-axis would be same as the previous 0 to 1. At the block window if you try to enter any other number at z-max limit, for example 2, the application can't input it because only 0 1 GERD is defined at grid window. You can also delete any block by selecting it at the blocks window and choosing delete icon at the top toolbar. Material properties for each block are defined using predefined colors, which would we be discussing in detail in the next video. For now, you can enter any number from 0 to 255 under the color column. Say for example 20, 60, and 120. Now each of the blocks has predefined properties as per standards and some colors such as 20 for example have no predefined values giving us the opportunity to customize materials. As you insert the color values at the block window, you notice the corresponding color is added to the color window and its material properties are displayed. In order for us to explore a few tools, let's change the limits of the third block, say x min 0, x max 1, y min 0, y max 1. The blocks are placed on each other by the principle of superposition with blocks of higher priority towards the bottom. In this example, the third block overlaps with the first block, but due to the higher priority of the third block, it has superseded and eliminated the first block at the area of intersection. We will be seeing more examples of such concepts in the later videos. To select multiple, choose a block and using the switch select icon allows us to select the other blocks to perform any required operation. Using deselect icon you can remove the blocks from selection. If you require to select all the blocks above the chosen block, click on the switch selected upward icon. Similarly, you can choose the switch selected downward icon. By default the unit of each grid are in centimeters but you can change them from grid tab and choosing grid unit. If you wanted to choose millimeter instead of centimeter, enter 0.001 meter as your unit. If you choose to transform grid widths, the object would match the previous dimensions of the object which were in centimeters. If you wish to scale the object to not match with the previous dimension, we should have chosen not to transform grid widths. Then, the numbers in the grid window remain, and only the unit is updated. At the image window you can select the view angle, either perspective, which is already present by default or you can choose any other elevation view, be it at x min, x max, y min, y max, or z min, z max. You can also directly select the blocks at the image window when you are at the select command and the corresponding block also gets highlighted at the block window. Similarly you can orbit using rotate icon. As you previously used scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. You can use zoom icon to zoom in by drawing a rectangular area of selection to zoom in. Now, you can use pen icon to pan across the window. You can choose zoom total icon to zoom out and view all the objects present in the window completely. By default the image window would be in orbit mode which makes navigation to other operations such as grid or blocks easier. You can save your file from the file menu or directly by clicking the save icon. These are a few basic commands to get familiar with the interface of Trisco. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.